After my last wardrobe update video, a few people showed interest in my backpacking and hiking clothing system. And I've talked about some of this stuff in the past, but I've never really gone in depth with the entire system. This is a single outfit with a lot of different layers that can cover all four seasons of your hiking and backpacking. I made a few tweaks for this year, so I was really excited to share some of the updates I've made along with my thoughts on some of the other pieces that I've hiked for hundreds and hundreds of miles in. Kind of starting off with some of the basics, you know, shirt, pants, shoes, uh, the pants. I've been using the Prana Stretch Zion pants. I got these last year and I think I've put about five or 600 miles on them so far and they are amazing. Um, I used to hike in the Outlier Slim Dungarees, which are great travel pants, but just not quite as comfortable for backpacking. They don't quite have the stretch or flexibility as these. Overall, they're just really, really comfortable pants and they have enough durability to withstand some beatings when you're out on the trail. Moving on to my hiking shirt, this is something that I changed from last year. Um, last year I used the Patagonia, it's the Cool Calpoline Daily Hoodie. Overall, I liked that mostly, but what I found after the year of wearing it, it really started to shrink up and that's with air drying. And I was just finding that it was too short and kind of riding up, especially when you have a big pack on, which causes things to generally ride up a bit more. Um, I had some rolling on the bottom hems and it kind of has that permanent stink after like 500 miles. So I wanted to change it up and try something different this year. I picked up the Outdoor Research Echo hoodie. Um, this is a new pickup for me, so I don't have a ton of thoughts on it but I love that they have a black color you know the colors don't matter as much for sun hoodies people think you need or want a white hoodie there is some arguments for dark colors actually being better in the sun in some circumstances so all in all I would say it doesn't really matter pick whatever colors you like I love blacks and grays uh, the one complaint I have is the hood seems a little tight and a little snug I wish it had a little more room I do prefer the hood on the Patagonia cool Calpoline hoodie but overall I like the fit of this has a little bit more length. The feel of the fabric's great. I am excited to see how it holds up this year on the trail. Uh, from there, I have shoes. Um, I've been using the Ultra Lone Peak 5s uh, since about halfway through the season last year. So I think I have probably a couple hundred miles on those, maybe 150. It was towards the middle to end of last year when I picked these up, but I really love them. I was using the Nike Wild Horse 6s, but I was realizing the more I hiked that they were just a little bit too small a little bit too narrow for my feet. Once I really got into the hiking season, I think my feet kind of widened out a bit and grew a little bit, which absolutely does happen. Uh, so I picked these up and have had zero problems with them. Uh, they're really nice, really lightweight and comfortable. They're a zero drop shoe, which takes some getting used to if you're not used to that. Um, I wear a lot of zero drop shoes just generally day to day, so it wasn't a big adjustment for me. But yeah, been really happy with these. My one uh, thing I would love to see in future updates would be some more attractive color schemes. Um, these are ugly. Uh, that's that's really my only complaint is the ugliness of all of the colorways that they offer. They just came out the Lone Peak 6s, equally ugly, but uh, other than the ugliness, they are great shoes and I've been really happy with them. Moving into the jackets and insulating layers, like I said, this is all one single outfit, but you want to be able to have multiple layers so you can add or remove items as you need to be able to best accommodate all of the different temperatures. I hike in a temperature range usually from about 20 degrees Fahrenheit up to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Having multiple removable layers just makes things a lot more versatile. Sometimes I don't bring every single layer that I'm talking about today, but it gives me that range for winter backpacking and camping all the way through you know, the heat of summer with sweltering heat. Getting into my active mid layer, uh, this is another new pickup of mine. It's the Outdoor Vitals Ventus hoodie. Uh, last year, I used a really inexpensive decathlon fleece, which was great for the pricing. Uh, full disclosure, Outdoor Vitals did send this out to me to test and try. Um, they're not sponsoring this video. They're not seeing it before it comes out. Uh, I was a no strings attached send. They were just curious to hear my thoughts on it as a new product. But initial impressions on this thing is excellent. Yeah, it's a full synthetic hoodie. Uh, I have the large size. It comes in right about eight ounces, so really lightweight, especially considering the synthetic 
synthetic aspect. It's also really packable for a synthetic jacket, which I have been really happy with so far on my initial impressions and testing. Really, really warm for the weight. You have a few things to help ventilate too. It has a quarter zip, so you can kind of leave this open and vent. Also makes it a little bit easier to come on and off. And they also have some strategic venting and insulation placement where the armpits are gonna have a little bit more mesh ventilation there. So it just makes it a lot more breathable. This is something great, you know, on a chilly morning or during, you know, the whole time during a winter hike, you can throw this on, keep it on. You're not gonna worry about sweating when it's cold, which always can be a dangerous situation. Um, but even just to wear around camp or around town, I love the cut of this too. The armholes go up really nice and high. It's a good athletic cut, so you have a lot of the flexibility still. Um, but yeah, initial impressions are great, and I can't wait to get this out. I'm actually headed out on a trip tomorrow, so I'll probably be out in the backcountry when this video goes live. Um, I'll share my thoughts once I get back in the comments. Um, but yeah, the Outdoor Vitals Ventus hoodie, new pickup, very excited to look into that a little bit further. Um, for my down insulation, kind of a camp jacket, I have the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer 2. Um, this is another really ultra light jacket. It comes in at eight ounces. It's 800 fill down. Uh, I picked this up last year and used it all season and really, really love it. I love the cut of this too, you know, kind of a slimmer athletic cut. So it's nice and flattering. Not that that's the big important factor when you're out in the back country, but we all want to look good, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, I really love this thing, really nice and warm. These two comboed together are just amazing. Generally, down jackets are going to be ideal for hiking and moving. That's why you want to have that synthetic mid layer and then a down jacket just to wear around camp because if the down gets wet, then it's not going to work as well and it's not going to insulate you like a synthetic jacket would. So when you're sitting down, you're not moving around, having both jackets, you can stay nice and cozy when you're having dinner, hanging around around a campfire, or if you really need to bundle up for a cold night of sleeping. And last and probably least is my rain jacket. Uh, this is something I really want to upgrade. I have my eye on the Arcteryx Beta LT. It's gonna be quite a bit heavier than this, but will suit me a lot better in some more severe conditions. But this is the Frog Togs Ultralight rain jacket. This thing is ugly. It's crunchy, it's noisy, uh, definitely not my favorite, but it comes in at 5.7 ounces. So I think that's 160 grams, if I remember right, weighing before this video. So super lightweight. It's a great emergency shell to have. You know, I probably wouldn't love having this if I was going on a trip that I knew was gonna rain the entire time. But as a just in case or an emergency shell, this thing is great, especially considering it's like 20 bucks. But that is my jacket layering system. Let's move on to kind of socks and underwear and that sort of stuff. All right, so these are all of the odds and ends. Starting off with the underwear, I have the Ex Officio Give and Go Boxer Briefs. I uh, picked these up for traveling mainly and have really enjoyed them for backpacking as well. Really lightweight synthetic boxer briefs, uh, quick drying, comfortable. For socks, I've tried a lot of different things and this combo has proven to work really well for me and really prevent any blisters or foot problems compared to a lot of the other stuff I've tried in years past. Um, I always wear liner socks, which liner socks are just kind of a thin sock layer that you put under your main like insulating or cushion socks. Uh, these are from Fox River. Apologies if they look a little nasty white socks for uh, hiking. You know, they're kind of always going to look a little dirty now, but these are just a really thin synthetic liner sock. Um, I really have enjoyed these. And once I pick these up, like I said, I haven't gotten any blisters in the two years I've had these. And then for my main sock, I have the Darn Tough hiker socks, another crowd favorite. Not much else to say about them, just a really nice wool sock. You have a little bit of padding, definitely some good insulation if your feet get cold, but they're not gonna make your feet hot in the summer months. This combo is absolutely excellent for me. Uh, for a hat, I have the Alaho cap from Arcteryx. From what I can tell, this thing is discontinued. Makes sense, I picked it up on clearance at REI last year, but really like it. I'd say any lightweight five panel hat is gonna be probably pretty similar. I know they make a couple of things that look similar on their website right now, so I'll link to those. But yeah, this is just a really lightweight cap. Um, it's nice to just have something to throw on your head to get a little extra sun protection in addition to the sun hoodie, and it's just comfortable 
and you all know me, I always love wearing my hats. For something a little bit warmer, I have the REI Insulated Beanie. This is a merino synthetic blend. Um, I've had this for quite a few years now, like five, six years, I think. And it's comfortable, it's nice, it's held up really well over time, it's inexpensive. I think they're like 16 or $17. Not much else to say about that. Uh, for gloves, I have the Smart Wool Liner Gloves. This is something, if you do a ton of winter camping, you're definitely gonna wanna pick up some heavier weight gloves, but these have worked really well for me. Uh, just a really thin merino wool glove. Um, these have very long fingers. So if you have short stubby fingers, they probably won't work well for you, but I have really long like piano fingers and uh, I really like these. I picked them up last year. They're super lightweight, small. They have the little you know touch fingers on them so you can use your smartphone. I always use all trails to navigate when I'm out backpacking. Worked great for me so far. Picked them up towards the end of last year. And another item I used all through last year, this is the Outdoor Research Active Ice Sun Gloves. My new sun hoodie actually has thumb loops, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep using these, but I really grew to like them last year. It's just nice to have a little bit of palm protection. I have to do a lot of like scrambling over trees and up, you know, steep little chunks on the trail and stuff. So it's just great to have the extra palm protection and the sun protection as well. You know, your hands can burn just like any other part of your body. And my pale polish skin just really can't handle any sun so I got to keep myself protected from the sun as much as absolutely possible when I'm out on trail. Uh, from there I have the Dirty Girl Gators. Not everyone is going to need these but I do a lot of hiking in the Cascades here in Oregon and all of the mountains in the Cascades are volcanoes so you get this like really fine volcanic ash which is essentially like beach sand and if you don't have something like this to cover up the tops of your shoes you know all that sand can get in your shoes. One it's it's like uncomfortable and dirty, but two, it can really cause a lot of friction and blisters. So this just kind of helps prevent that. For a warm base layer in the winter months, this isn't gonna be too helpful because I don't think they're for sale, unfortunately, but I'll talk about them really quickly anyway. It's from a brand called Artelect. Uh, three years ago, they reached out and wanted to send these out for me to test and try. And I don't think they're for sale yet. So these were kind of like a pre-production thing that they sent and I love them. They are amazing, really lightweight, uh, it's a merino material called new yarn so super lightweight super insulating and warm for the weight um, I love them but yeah I don't think they're for sale I'll link whatever I can in the description below and last on the table here I have some sunglasses uh, these are from knockaround I was really looking for just a nice lightweight inexpensive pair of sunglasses to bring out backpacking so I didn't have to worry about my like nicer more expensive sunglasses when I'm out on the trail if they get dropped or messed up um, these for the price are excellent quality you know not going to be like Ray-Ban quality or anything like that but they look great they're really inexpensive and I'm not going to be too sorry if something happens to these when I'm out on trail that's actually it that is my four season hiking and backpacking layered outfit system and I was getting the notes together for this video I was like wow this seems like a whole lot of stuff but it really is one single outfit you know not everything comes with me on every single trip unless you know that's kind of the coldest scenario packing list but usually I'll bring an extra pair of socks and we'll leave some of the warmer insulating items at home during the hot summer months. Hope you all enjoyed this one. I know I've been doing a few more backpacking videos lately. I am just obsessed and so excited for this year's backpacking season. I have a ton of great trips planned. I'd love to hear if you have any trips planned this year. Let's get that discussion going in the comments. But thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.